we learn on it, but I had a chance to hang out and have incredible conversations. When you're in a car for six hours driving cross country, hoping to find a tornado, hoping to see a storm, you got a lot of time to kill. And what happened in that car ride was me and some of the, the dudes that came on that trip that I invited, we got really close. And we got to get past the surface and really just talk about life. All four of us are dads, and we had a chance to just kind of just breathe and talk about what is going on. And so, man, I can't wait till someone invites me to go storm chasing in because being that close, that doesn't even tell you, it's just amazing. I'm pretty sure there was like only five cars that had been on that road. I love invitations to go to experiences and, and things, but also I love even more personal invitations. I'm a dad of three girls, and uh, one of my daughters, Molly, she's our youngest, when she says, Dad, let's go get coffee, croissants, and play Uno, I'm all in, man. And Molly and I are there hanging out. We love, look at those croissants are so tasty looking, aren't they? Like, I, anybody love croissants as much as I love croissants? Okay, thank you. So I love when Molly says, Dad, can we go get coffee? She gets hot cocoa. And we get croissants and we hang out at one of my favorite local coffee shops. But what's great about that experience is not just the invitation, it's the conversation. Because over croissants and Uno, Molly loves to tell me about what's going on in her life, what she's thinking about. She just, you know, she's like, wants to chat it up. Now, can you imagine us just being there and we just hang out and we don't talk and she just invites me and we just eat and go home. Can you imagine if there was no conversation? It wouldn't be the same. Because the invitation always needs to be paired with a conversation. So tonight, I want you to know there's power in inv invitations. And when it comes to the kingdom of God, it's the invitation that can lead to someone else's transformation. So we're going to look at a story that you've already heard in Matthew 22. If you have a copy of the scriptures, go ahead and grab it right now. Because I want to break down just how powerful that invitation is. And Jesus tells this story. It's our last story of the week. It's in Matthew chapter 22. If you have a copy of it, ask for help. It's in the new part of the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And I want to break down this story because, don't miss this, you have the power through your invitation to get someone else the transformation they need in Jesus. Matthew 22. If you're having a hard time finding it, sometimes my trick in the Bible, if I want to get somewhere fast, is I open it up like this to the middle, and then you just need to go right or left. And if you're going to go to the new part, you go right, and you'll find Matthew. Matthew was one of the disciples. He was around Jesus a lot. And we get to read his firsthand account of the words of Jesus. Matthew 22. It says, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by a story of a king who prepared a great wedding feast for his son. When the banquet was ready, he sent his servants out to notify those who were invited, but they all refused to come. So we have this, we have this feast. How many of you guys love going to a party? How many of you guys love a party with a meal? Right? Like, those two things being paired together, that is a great party. When there's like food and fun together, that makes for a great party. And we've got this guy, and he has this party, and he sets the party up, and it's going to be this incredibly bougie party for all of his guests, this big feast. And yet, when the feast opens and the table is set, the chairs remain empty. It says in, in the verse, it says in 20, it says, they refused to come. I want you to consider this. An invitation was given, and yet the king had his invitation rejected. It says, but they all refused to come in verse 3. So, in verse 4, it says, they sent other servants to tell them the feast has been prepared, the bulls and the fat calf have been killed, and everything is ready. Come to the banquet. So he reopens the invitation. I've got everything set, the chairs are here, the table is ready, the food is going to be legit. And yet, the response in verse five, but the guests he had invited ignored them 
and went their own way, one to his farm, another to his business. Others seized his messengers, insulted them, and killed them. So not only did they reject the invitation, they did even worse. They rejected the people, and they brought on insults and pain. So the king was furious. He sent out his army to destroy the murderers and burn their town. That's a response. And he said to his servants, the wedding feast is ready. The guests I invited aren't worthy of honor. And so the king has a decision to make. Am I going to go ahead and shut this whole thing down and no one else can come? Or are we going to open it up again? And so we see in this story, this is what it says. Now go out to the street corners, invite everyone you see. So the servants brought in everyone they could find, good and bad alike. The banquet hall was filled with guests. I want to put verse 10 on screen, and when it gets to the yellow part, I just want you to read it for me, because verse 10 on this, it has everything that we need to talk about tonight. So when I get to the yellow, I want you to say the yellow part. So the servants brought in good and bad alike, and the banquet hall was filled with guests. The king changed the invitation. He opened it up as wide as he could. And what I love about this, this is the game-changing moment in scripture because he says, good and bad alike. The king opens it up and he says, listen, go find everyone you can. There's an urgency. I've got this amazing feast. I, I just want to see people fill the seats. And he says, go find everyone good and bad. I don't know about you, but sometimes when we think about invitations that we want to hand out to people when it comes to Jesus, we have these filters and these clarifying moments where we say, well, I'm only going to invite these people, or I'm only going to invite those people, or I'm only going to invite the good people. I'm only going to invite the people that look like they belong. I'm only going to invite the people that will, you know, not make me look strange or weird or annoy me. And yet the king says in his invitation, everyone, good and bad alike, are invited. When it comes to the kingdom of God, when we start talking about invitations, we need to realize something is that the invitation cannot be limited by your view of people. But so often that is exactly what happens. And the king says, listen, good and bad alike, we're going to invite everyone to this party because that's how big a deal this party is. The story continues on, and there's a really interesting part that follows that. So they filled it up, but when the king came in to meet, the guests noticed a man who wasn't wearing the proper clothes for a wedding. Friend, he asked, how is it you are here without wedding clothes? But the man had no reply. The king said to his aides, bind his hands and feet and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. We got to talk about this because this story, it doesn't really make sense on the surface. Why would a king open up his party, invite guests, get rejected, then open it up to good and bad? I thought everybody was invited. And then we have this strange moment where someone gets thrown out into the street for not wearing the right clothes. What is he talking about? Well, let me break it down. First of all, the king, the king is representing God. And God has this invitation to this amazing feast, this party, this party that's going to culminate in heaven one day when everything will change and he will sit on the throne once and forever and everything and everyone will be under his rule. But it's not like any other party. It's an amazing feast. And he allows people to come to that party and he invites everyone to come. But see, when it comes to God, you've learned this week that you can't just invite someone to be the party, there has to be a conversation. Why? Because without Jesus, there is no way to stay. The Bible talks about being clothed with Christ. If you do not have Christ in your life, when the end comes and when the party is opened up, we will not be there. That's why that illustration, why he had that person thrown in the street, there's a visual there of unless you have the right clothes, which in our case is Jesus, you can't be at the party. I don't, we don't like to hear that. We don't know what to do with that, but that's how this works. And that's why what we're talking about tonight is so empowering. We cannot just have invitations without conversations. 
Like we can go out and say, hey, I want you to come to my youth group. I want you to come to my uh, you know, mission trip. I want you to come to this or that. Your invitation has to always have a conversation attached because they have to know about Jesus. That's when the invitation has power to transformation. And the thing about it is, is that it takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of you know, prayer and thought. But everyone deserves the invitation, they deserve to know about Jesus. See, it would be real easy for you to grow up thinking that, you know what, to be a Christian, to be a follower of Christ, to be a disciple, is just someone who does the right things, holds the right book, worships with the right songs, goes to the right camps, come to the right church. It'd be real easy to, to like, think, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. But let me just tell you, one of the biggest responsibilities you have in life is to offer invitations to meet the king. One of the biggest responsibilities you have in life is not just to give an invitation, but it's to have a conversation about why you and I follow Jesus. And what I love, Southeast, that we've done is we've made that and broke it down into one phrase. How do we start doing this? We do it one at a time. That's how Jesus did it. That's how he walked and talked with people. He met people one-on-one through one-on-one conversation, one person at a time. He had invitations that led to conversations that led to transformation. And the power behind that, the power behind that, here's the best part, does not come from your own ability. If you are a baptized follower of Christ, you have something that's more powerful inside of you than you could ever imagine. In Acts, I want to put this verse on screen. I want you to see because a lot of you are like, hey, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I don't know how I'm going to have the words. I don't know how I'm going to be able to. You're right. God knew that. He knew in order to have the invitation actually work for you to have this conversation, you needed some help. And so what I love is that we are not people without power. He has given us something greater than ourselves. His name is the Holy Spirit. Check out Acts chapter 1. It says this. I want you to read the yellow out loud because this is for you and me. But you will receive when the Holy Spirit, let's try again. I screwed that up. That's my bad, y'all. But you will receive when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my telling people about me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the I want to leave that up for a minute. I don't know if you know, but the Holy Spirit is God's presence living inside of you. The very presence of God, even though we're messy and know that we make mistakes and we sin and we do things that we're like not okay with God. Because of Jesus in your life, you now have the most powerful thing ever. You have God's presence inside of you, giving you everything you need to go out one at a time to offer an invitation, to have a conversation, and then watch God do the transformation that he wants to do. And here's what is at stake in this room. One invitation can literally change an entire generation of a family. Let me explain what I'm talking about. At, right at our church, we had a story that popped up several years ago that I have to share. That it's just amazing because literally one conversation can lead to an entire generation of change in a family. And I know some of you come from families that are not yet believers. Some of you are the only people in your family attending a church service, holding a Bible, even thinking about following Jesus. Some of you are the first people in your family to say yes to Jesus and be baptized. Some of you are the only person in your friend group who actually believes in Jesus and the rest of your friends don't. Some of you are the only person in your classroom. Some of you are all right there wondering like, God, what can I do? That's what I want to tell you about Luke. When Luke was in our middle school ministry, um, Luke went to a school, public school, and, and Luke took very seriously the idea of invitation and conversation. Luke was not just about, hey, come to my church. Luke was serious about telling people about Jesus. Like this brother, he has had so much like power and courage behind his voice. He, he wanted to invite people to our church left and right, but he also wanted to have conversations about the gospel and the life change of Jesus. And so Luke began praying and, and thinking, and so he would go to his school, and he was always on a mission when he was in middle school of 
Who, God, who's on my path? Who have you put before me? He had his eyes open, and that's where he connected with Ryan. This is a picture of Ryan and Luke, but I need to give you some context for this picture and when it happens. One day, they had a conversation that led to an invitation, and that was to attend an event that we did called Belief. And Believe is just a, a, a weekend edition of Mix. Think of it that way. A bunch of middle schoolers, a lot of pizza, a lot of long, like, we don't go to bed, we, we show up, we worship, we just, it was an amazing party for Jesus. And so he said, hey, why don't you come with me to that event? And not only did he invite him to that event, we always offered people a chance to accept Christ at that event and to make a decision that would change their life forever. But what I love about this story is, is that Luke didn't look at one of us and say, have that conversation. He didn't look at his leader to have that conversation. He had the conversation with Ryan. And right in middle school, this picture was taken because at the end of that event, he baptized Ryan. And that conversation led to Ryan being transformed by the power of Christ. Now that, you clap for that. If that's all that happened, that would be amazing. But I told you, one conversation can lead to a generation of transformation because later on, what does Ryan do with that? Ryan receives Christ. He starts, you know, you know learning and growing and doing all these things. And so the next, the next thing to happen is, man, he brings his sister Julia to a mixed camp just like this when she was in middle school. And while they were in middle school, they went to a week like this. They had all the fun, all the worship. They learned about Jesus. And then there was an invitation that led her to mix, that led to a conversation that at the end of mix led Ryan to do this with Julia. Check this out. That's at the beach you were just at right there. And Ryan baptized his sister, Julia. So we have, we have an invitation from Luke to Ryan. We have now a, a conversation about them. They, he gets baptized. He's a follower of Christ. Now he turns around. He has a conversation. His sister finds Jesus. He gets to baptize his sister. Right now we have this amazing story unfolding. And you need to know something that Ryan was the first person in his family to do that. Fast forward a year later, uh, Ryan and and Luke are in high school, and uh, we're, we had this amazing Easter weekend baptism where you could come in and get baptized, and a lot of us on staff, we had this role. We would come in and fill my role. Like, I think I had the shorts, and one of my staff members had the shirts, so you, all you had to do was come in after service, and you would just say, hey, what size are you? Congratulations, we're high-fiving people, and I'll never forget the day. I'll never forget the day that we were literally just sitting, and, and we're in between services, and we're getting ready to stand back up and do our thing, and I just remember looking down and I was like, Who, who's with Ryan and Julia? Like, I have, I've not met them before. I'm like, I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I was blanking on, on who they're with. And suddenly, uh, my friend Taylor, she said, that's, that's their parents. I was like, their parents. And through the prayers of so many people around this family, this picture happened. And that is a daughter and a son for the first time baptizing their mom and dad into the kingdom of God. And so now you have this family photo of this family that is completely changed forever. A mom, a dad, a sister and a brother, all now part of the kingdom of God. Why, how did this happen? One invitation, one conversation led to transformation. And how did it go down? It didn't go down all at once. One moment at a time, one person at a time, God used each person in that story and everybody around them to lead to a generational change. And that family tree will forever be different because of Luke's conversation, because of the prayers, because of the boldness. Students, hear me loud and clear. In this room are the most influential people on planet Earth. You have the power to literally transform everybody you know simply by talking about the one who transformed you. You see, when we invite everyone we know, the kingdom will grow. And I think sometimes we sit back and we like hang out in the cheap seats and we think, oh, this is for someone else to do. That's for the outgoing kid to do. That's for my leader to do. That's for somebody that's more mature, who's been a believer longer than I am. Listen, that's not what it's all about. 
If you are going to be a follower of Jesus, it is our responsibility to make sure that we hand out as many invitations before he comes back, that we have as many conversations before he comes back so that we can see as many people at the party in heaven than we could ever imagine. We have to not wait on someone else. We have to get in the game ourselves and we have to activate the thing that God's asked us to do. Why? Because he gave you the Holy Spirit, not so that you could sit around and go, I'm gonna become a better kid in life. I'm gonna get better grades. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. No, he gave you the Holy Spirit. It's really clear so that you could be his reliable witnesses about the power of Jesus in your life. And so tonight, I just ask of you something. Would you consider an invitation that leads to a conversation? Because I'm telling you right now, they won't make a lake big enough for that party. And I believe in this room, there is a family that is gonna be completely transformed simply because you had the courage and the boldness to say, Holy Spirit, use me to have a conversation with my dad. Holy Spirit, use me to have a conversation with one of my cousins, maybe even a grandparent maybe a coach, a teacher, a neighbor. Use whatever you have, the Holy Spirit, to have an invitation and a conversation so that the whole world can experience the transformation of Jesus. I'm gonna pray, and tonight, I want you to think about the person you wrote down on the card earlier. I want you to just think about that. Close your eyes and think about that. Who did you write down? Who's the person on that card? And I just want to take a moment because the Holy Spirit is in this room and I want to close this message out by allowing him to speak to you about the conversation and the invitation that needs to happen next. Knowing you may get some rejections, you may get some like no's, you may get some hands to the face, but you may get some yeses. The point is this, the banquet, the party that's thrown by God, everyone, good and bad, through Jesus, needs to get the opportunity to say yes to your invitation and to listen to the conversation. Let's pray. Father, I just, I know that you, you can do amazing things through ordinary people. God, I think sometimes we think we have to be rock stars at telling people about Jesus, but man, the Holy Spirit is God's presence living inside of us. Therefore, we, we need to rely on him in this room. There are names on the hearts and minds of every person in this room. I pray that you give them courage to be a witness for you. May they understand that being a part of the family of God is not just coming and going through church services, but it's actually talking about your faith. So God, settle us down just for a minute. And I just want to pause before I say amen. I'm going to let the Holy Spirit speak to you about that invitation and that conversation.